this is the life, Gladys. I love her. Not a care in the world. Just lying here on the beach, the sea lapping gently against the shore, the sun beating down. Ah. Oh, there's not a cloud in the sky. Switch the radio on, love. Let's listen to something soothing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Ken Dodd Show. Oh, yes. Oh, no, Gladys. Folk, are you feeling funny? Yeah! Welcome to Daddy's World of Whimsy. And today, we're celebrating the good things in life. But first, a word from our producer. Hello, everybody. I'm laughing already. <laughs> but wait, because here now, without a stitch of clothing on, a banana sticking out of one ear and a parsnip in the other, strings of onions round his neck, festooned with globe artichokes, painted with beetroot juice, Carrying the biggest cucumber you've ever seen, the One Man Harvest Festival, Ken Dodd! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My dear demented friends, today we're celebrating the good things in life, folks. The good things in life, the good earth. And what it is to go down on your knees in the garden, scoop a handful of good black earth, sniff it and say, I'll kill that tomcat from next door. <laughs> the Harvest Festival, the vicar singing high mass over a ton of sprouts. <laughs> what it is, what it is to feel the affectionate touch of a dog's wet nose. First thing in the morning, as you crawl under the bed, looking for your collar stud. <laughs> Life is a great illusion, as the ferret said when he got lost in a Scotsman's guilt. And what, <laughs> what are the arts? What are the arts? The great painters and artists. Van Gogh, cutting his ear off and saying, thank goodness, now I'll be able to get my cap on. <laughs> The good life, the good life. What is the good life? It's King Henry VIII grabbing half a chicken or a leg of lamb, taking a bite and throwing it over his shoulder to the dog. He did this all the time. He was the only English king to have an Alsatian weighing five tons. <laughs> so go on, ladies. Early in the morning, throw open your window, take a deep breath and throw your chest out. Hopefully I'll be waiting outside to catch it. <laughs> A British Sunday. What a beautiful day on a Sunday for grabbing hold of the parson's nose and saying, let's have shorter sermons. Uh, <laughs> in today's edifying extravaganza, we should be asking questions like, if a duck gets caught short in the middle of the night, does it use a quack pot? <laughs> Talfrin. Talfrin, you, Talf, you look, you look a bit peaky. You look a bit peaky. Have an acorn. An acorn? Look, mate, I might have teeth like a squirrel, but I don't eat like one. <laughs> Talfrin, Talf, yeah. do you don't know what's good for you? This is all nature's bountiful goodness, this acorn. It's muck, man. Vegetarian muck. You can't live off the things you find in the countryside. Well, of course you can. Well, yes. sparrows do, don't they? Oh, yes, yes, but look how thin their legs are. <laughs> Rubbish! <laughs> I love the country. I love the countryside. Haven't you ever tasted a cowslip? No, but I've trodden in one or two. <laughs> but uh, don't you think the countryside is being spoiled in this industrial age? In this industrial age? Uh-huh. Spoiled? Uh-huh. Spoiled. Well, it's quite true. <laughs> it's quite true, Curly. Only the, only the other day I was leaning on a grassy knoll, quaffing a deep draught of ice-cold sparkling water from a stream, and I thought, by joke, this, this water tastes funny. Uh-huh. And was it? Well, I looked upstream and I saw a troop of Boy Scouts running away from the banking. <laughs> Vegetarian rubbish, man. You can't beat a good thick steak. Steak? Yes. Meat? Rubbish. I, I live off compost-grown fish fingers. stone crown lobscouse. And you'll never believe this, but I roll my own cucumbers. <laughs> I have organic rissoles as well. Oh, dear. Is it catching? <laughs> See, Talvin, some people don't breathe right. See, when I breathe, when I breathe, I can feel it reaching down to my toes. You can feel what reaching down to your toes? <laughs> <laughs> yoga, that's the thing. My brother's a yoga fanatic. In fact, only this morning, he invented a very unusual, brand new position which nobody's ever thought of. How did he do that? Well, I don't know. He'll probably tell us when we get his head out. <laughs> 
And now, folks, it's time to open the suggestion box, our own suggestion box in which we invite listeners to send in their funny ideas. I'll just, I'll just open the box. There we are. Now then, I see. Our first suggestion, oh yes, our first suggestion comes from a little boy in Harrow. I, I suggest that sweetie shops be banned from selling toffee cigarettes for, for three, three reasons. Yeah. One, they're a bad influence on children. And, and, and two, yes. they're, they're a job to light. And yes. three, <laughs> three, they nearly give you a hernia trying to get a drag on them. <laughs> I say, Ken, what sort of an upbringing did you have? Oh, happy, happy. Oh, we were happy. We were poor, but we were happy, you see. We were poor, but we made the best of it. You know, we, we could never afford much food. In fact, my brother was so thin, my dad used to keep him in a flute. <laughs> but he was happy, you see. There were hard times, but they taught us the value of things. I always remember the day my dad found half a dozen cockroaches. Cockroaches? In cockroaches. Cock? Roaches <laughs> in my bed. He belted me ear old. Ear old? Ear old. Ear? Oh. <laughs> what did your dad do? He belted me ear old and said, No pets allowed. <laughs> well, we were happy. But I was happy. Oh, we were happy. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, Ken, when I was a youngster, I had patches on everything I wore. Patches? Yes, patches on my jacket, on my trousers. Patches on my cap. I even had patches on my underpants. Sure. Yes. I once walked by mistake into a fancy dress ballman and won first prize as a quilt. <laughs> <laughs> but I was happy. You happy I yes. was happy. Honestly, I used to feel so ashamed. So ashamed walking down our cobble street with my granny in her clogs a straw bonnet. I mean, she could have put some other clothes on as well, couldn't she? I mean... <laughs> We were happy, you see. We were happy. She always believed, like fruit shops, you should put your good stuff in the front of the window. No matter. <laughs> we were happy, you see. My, my dad... My dad... Used to play... Play? Play football with us every night. He used to kick us up and down the stairs. <laughs> we were happy. We were happy, yes. <laughs> Darling, darling, do you remember some enchanted evening? It was summer, July, I think, 1951. Oh, Cynthia, how could I forget? You'd just come back from a sculpt jamboree. Ah, yes, I remember it well. In those days, I was all duffel coat and toggles. <laughs> but, but we were so happy. Indeed. Do you remember how we laughed? when the pea came out of your whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have ever thought it would have turned up all those years later? <laughs> if I remember rightly, I lost me woggle that night, too. <laughs> Do you remember the velvet starry sky that night? Oh. The moon? Oh, you showed me everything. Everything? <laughs> everything. How to dip-dip. Oh, yes, of course. Dop-dop. <laughs> How to whittle. But that's handy. <laughs> I was a ten... <laughs> I was a tenderfoot. As well. <laughs> but we were happy. Now, we're very lucky. We're very lucky to have with us today Mr. Eric Sippert, who has just been voted the world's greatest authority on tea tasting. Mr. Sippert, we have several blends of tea in front of you. Could you please tell us which is which? Oh, yes, yes, certainly. <laughs> Well, that, that is Ceylon tea. Ceylon tea is correct. And <laughs> this, this is Lapsang tea. Yes, yeah, secondly, Lapsang tea is also correct. Uh, now, let me see. This last one is... <laughs> oh, I've been poisoned. Oh. And for the third time, you're correct. It was BBC Canteen Tea. <laughs> And now, over to a secluded garden in St. John's Wood, where that great poet, Oscar Wilde, is composing his witty epigrams. Here, you great Irish puff! Keep your flaming tomcats off Miss Sprouts! Shouted the woman next door. <laughs> ah, it's you! Shut your gob and get inside, you old rutbag, before the fingers in! 
retorted Oscar wittily. <laughs> well, so much for culture. As the man said when he found a toadstool in his trousers. <laughs> that was an excerpt from Canon. Hey, <laughs> there is good and bad in all of us. Aye. My wife's away on a three months holiday. Oh, that's good. No, bad. Today's the last day. Oh, that's bad. No, that's good. I found myself a girlfriend. Oh, that's good. No, that's bad. She's an Eskimo. That's bad. No, that's good. Her name's Nell. That's good. No, that's bad. She's married. Oh, that's bad. No, that's good. Her husband's away and she's invited me back to her place. That's good. No, that's bad. Her place is in Greenland. That's bad. Oh. No, that's good, because none of our neighbours will find out and tell me missus. That's good. No, that's bad, because when we got back to her igloo, she'd invited all her friends in for a traditional Eskimo evening. That's bad. No, that's good, because the tradition was wife swapping. That's good. No, that's bad, because the wife I got was my own. That's where she went for her holidays. <laughs> That you'll give me all your kisses Every winter, every summer, every fall When we are far apart Or when you're near me Love me with all of your heart As I love you Don't give me your love for a moment or an hour Love me always as you've loved me from the start With every beat of your heart Love me with all of your heart That's all I want, love Love me with all of your heart not at all Just promise me this That you'll give me All your kisses Every winter Every summer Every fall When we are far apart Or when you're near me Love me with all of your heart as I love you Don't give me your love For a moment Or an hour Love me always As you've loved me From the stars With every beat of your Now to Naughty Ash University, where that gibbering genial genealogist, Professor Rufus Chakabati, has been uprooting a few family trees. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Put it away. <laughs> now, today, <laughs> today, students, I want to tell you about wine, women, and song. Though in these days, you're lucky if it's draft mild, Minnie Caldwell, and hands, knees, and bumps of daisy. <laughs> history, history has always produced men who believed in the good things in life, like Don Juan. Why was he called Don Juan? Well, he used to be called Don too until he got accidentally kicked by a donkey. <laughs> but me, myself, I'm what they call a gourmet, a gourmet. I'm a gourmet. I come from a, a family of long livers. Our kidneys are not up to much, but our livers... I <laughs> uh, say, Professor, what's the best way of pouring a fine vintage wine? Straight down your cake hole. Where do you think? Terry, <laughs> <laughs> Professor, should you, uh, should you make wine stand? Only for the national anthem. You see... <clears throat> <clears throat> 
students, gather around me. Places, everybody. Make a chain. Yeah. Now, now, students, <laughs> gather around. I'm going to give you a practical demonstration on how your senses actually work. Keep an eye on him, Gladys. <laughs> now, you, madam. Madam, I'm going to touch you with something. Just close your eyes. You ready? Now, I'm touching you. Did you feel anything? Of course I did, you fool. My behind was on fire. Now, that's very interesting. It proves conclusively that you are susceptible to this red-hot poker in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, students, I want you to look at this man and notice especially what he is holding in his right hand. Oh, I never. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a banana. Now, students, I want you to particularly notice how he is pulling the sides of it down. This is a very technical procedure called peeling a banana. Peeling, peeling a, a banana. banana. Thank you. Now, please observe what he is going to do with it. Oh, look. He's shoving it in his ear. Now, this, <laughs> this tells me a great deal about this man. What does it tell you, students? He's crackers. Well, he's, he's round a twist. You're all wrong. You see, if you were as skilled, if you were as skilled and as scientifically observant as me, you'd realise this man is suffering from amnesia. Well, how do you make that out, then? He's forgotten where his mouth is. <laughs> Just suppose... There was no such thing as different sexes. Oh, how do you mean? Well, just suppose our Stone Age ancestors had never discovered the vital difference. Oh. <coughs> morning, Fred. Morning. Morning, Charlie. Oh, oh good morning. <laughs> yeah, Fred, I'm a, I'm a bit worried about Charlie, you know. <laughs> worried about Charlie? Huh. What do you mean? Well, he... Like that funny walk, you know. Man, he's a well-built lad, I must admit. Oh, you mean his, his chest? Yeah, I mean, look at it. You think he had a couple of ferrets up his jumper. <laughs> just, just look at his face. Honestly, I've, I've seen more hairs on a dinner plate. <laughs> and another thing. What's that? Do you know, do you know, he, he never gets buffed in the river with the rest of the lads, you know. Oh, well, maybe he's shy, man. He's just gone down to the river now. Is he? Yes. Oh, come on then. This is, this is it. It's our chance. We can hide behind that rock. Oh, yes. Let's see what he's up to. Yes. Oh. Hey, I think he must be one of those schoolboy sopranos. Mind, mind he doesn't see us. No, he's, no, he's, got, he's got his back to us. By Jove. <laughs> he's a well-built lad, isn't he? <laughs> Cheeky devil. <laughs> hey, keep your head down. He's turning around. Hey? Eee. Well, well. Now, let that be a lesson to you, Fred. Lay off the chest expanders. <laughs> Here, there's, there's something short. Here, there's something missing. Hey? Here, there, there's something wrong. Hey? Eee, the poor lad. Oh, poor lad. Well, 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 well. Oh, well, well. No wonder he gets bathed on his own, man. Hey, do you reckon he... Uh, well, yeah, he, must, he must have done. That river's full of pike. <laughs> hey, shame of it all. Uh, oh, my heart reaches out of that poor oh, lad. Yes, yeah, you, you, you stay here a minute, Fred. I'll just nip down and offer him some words of comfort, like, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, you stop it, you saucy monkey. <laughs> hey, hey. What's going on, John Lennon? Hey. What are you wrestling for? Wrestling? Who's wrestling? I've just discovered monkey business. <laughs> this is Valentine Tomb's macabre moment of mystery. It'll frighten the knickers off you. <laughs> I've been in this dungeon for 17 years, four months and three days. And all that time I haven't seen or heard from another living soul. I'm going mad, mad, mad. Start staring mad I, without anyone to talk to. Thank heaven, at last, some company. Are you prisoner 787673? No, no, I'm prisoner number 787674. 
Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I've got the wrong number. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I wonder who the hell he was, knocking at this time of night. Swap shop. Hello there, girls. You look superb in one of our indigo braziers. Simply clip on at the front, breathe in and indigo. <laughs> You see, in this good life, there are the believers and the disbelievers. So there he was, juggling three reinforced concrete coal bunkers, whilst an assistant drove a double-decker bus across the plank on his head. But he didn't fool me. Yeah, well, it's a knack, you know. It's, it's, it's a knack. Oh, yes, man, it's all fake, man. They have steel girders built into their suits. And, of course, they're muscle-bound. <laughs> they, they must take us for fools. I mean, it's like that fellow who jumped out of the Manera plane wearing a lead suit and carrying a concrete shed. Slate of hand, man. All done by wires. It's a knack. It's a yes. knack. It's obvious. I went over to him as he lay in the hole in the ground. Mind you, it was well done. It isn't often you see a man with his head screwed right round and his, his feet sticking out of his waistcoat pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's a knack, man. It's a knack. Oh, it's a knack. I poked him with my stick and I said, get up, you fraud, you're not hurt. What did he say? He moaned in agony. <laughs> Faked, of course. Ventriloquism. That's, That's the secret, eh? A hidden accomplice. I once saw a man lay down under a steamroller. I thought, hello, another of them. He pretended to be flattened, of course. Well, he had the knack of looking flattened. Yes. I'll give him that. <laughs> it's a knack, you know. Yes, it's a knack. It's mirrors, mirrors, that's how they do it. And they soak themselves in water like a dried apricot. And, and it makes them fill out again. It's a knack. Yes. It's like they did with the Titanic. That was a knack. It didn't really sink, you know. No. You can see that any day of the week on the Serpentine. All they did was change the name, paint the funnels a different colour. Tax evasion, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> it is the same when Vesuvius erupted. Any silly fool can poke a volcano with its litman. Boss. They did it to avoid death duties. Boss. It's a it's knack. It's a knack. It's a knack. knack. Oh, it's a knack. It's a knack. Look, look how they faked World War II. You never saw any bombs, did you? No, no. You never saw any Germans? Not a one. All to my films? Yes. Charlie Chaplin didn't fool me. Yeah. That was never Hitler, man. No. I once spoke to a man who produced World War I in a pub in Epping. He did it with one actor. Photographed millions of times. Yes. they would. It's a knack, you know. Yes, it's yes. Knack. It's take us for idiots. It's like those moon landings. They were all filmed on the corporation rubbish tip at Croydon. <laughs> Look out! Mind that bus! Oh. There they go again. Oh, yes, it's I a clever did. fake, you know. Yes, it Probably is. projected onto a sheet. Yes, it's an, an old, old trick. trick. Old yeah. trick. Yeah. Oh. 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 I, I, I say, Ooh. that almost felt like a real bus. And this almost feels like a real broken leg. It's all done by mass hypnotism, you know. It's, it's, it's a, a knack. It's a knack, you know. It's a knack. Yes, it's a knack. <laughs> What is the symbol? What is the symbol of the good things in life? A bottle? A blonde? A quick burst on the banjo? By Jove, I needed that. No, it's not wine, women and song. It's the home, a house. Somewhere to lay our heads and our feet, if it's big enough. A place where, where a man can be king and get crowned every night by his wife. <laughs> what is the most important room in the house? I'd say it's the bedroom. I think it's the bathroom, because it's the only place where you can have a good sing-song on your own without being disturbed. Oh. Ah, peace at last. What could be more relaxing? A good hot bath, ah, a long loofer, and a little rubber duck. Ah, this is the life. I'm trying to yellow rib. Afternoon. <laughs> I come for your window money. Wi window money? When, can you see I'm the window cleaner? Can you see I'm in the middle of my ablutions? Clear off before I shove me loofer up your hooter. Oh well, <laughs> if that's the way you feel about it, I hope your rubber duck sinks. Come in, chief. Now where was I? Oh yes. Oh, try yellow ribbon. Onward, onward. Oh no, it's that. Blinking fellow next door, practicing his trombone in the bath. 
Well, I've heard of water music, but this is ridiculous. Hey! Put a sock in it! Put a sock in it, mate! Put a sock in it! <laughs> Thank you, vicar. <laughs> that does it. I'm locking all the doors and windows. Lock the whole perishing lot. Lock the windows, lock the doors, I'll shove some cotton wool in my ears, and if anybody gets through this little lot, I'll eat my loofah. I'll eat my loofah. Don't <laughs> yellow rip around the old phone. What the heck's this coming up? Here. What the heck's this coming up under my legs? Good grief, it, it looks like it is. It's a perishing periscope. <laughs> Oh, mon Dieu, my mistake. Oh, I am begging your humble pardon, monsieur. Hey, who the heck are you? I am Jacques Cousteau, monsieur. <laughs> uh, welcome to my wonderful world of the sea. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you something for nothing, Jacques, old lad. <laughs> it's blooming loof and does not taste horrible. <laughs> I've been listening to Ken Dodd in the Great Harvest Festival of Comedy Show. Telford Thomas did squirrel impressions and stored his nuts for the winter. Nice one, squirrel. Gretchen Franklin said she was game, and farmer John Graham shot her. Germaning Wilson displayed her prize melons, and this surprised farmer Michael McLean so much, he fell into the combine harvester and rotated his crops. <laughs> the corn was picked by writers Dave Dutton, Norman Beadle, David McKellar, and Philip. And the show was pruned, reaped, and produced by Bobby Farmer Giles James! <laughs>